Hello, this is AstrologyNewsReport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person or place or event. This week we've decided to analyze the birth chart of Elliot Roger, the insane young man who went on a rampage in the student enclave of Isla Vista, just outside the University of California Santa Barbara campus, killing six and injuring 13 others before shooting himself. Elliot Roger was born in London on July 24, 1991. His birth information was obtained from the text of his 140-page manifesto, which is aptly titled, My Twisted World, The Story of Elliot Roger. And though he did not include his birth time, we believe we can make a strong case for the chart we have cast for this deeply troubled individual to help explain this awful tragedy. This chart is Virgo rising. People born under this sign are very detail-oriented, fastidious, analytical, and intellectual. Virgo is the sixth sign of the natural zodiac, which is, in our Vedic astrology chart, the house of enemies and defense. As such, Virgos can be skilled at tactics and strategy. Note that his ascendant degree is square to the nodes, Rahu and Ketu, a pattern that indicates a lot of stress and tension all through one's life. I can tell you, Ron, I scanned through the entire manifesto. It is very detailed, and his recall of events in his life stretching back to before he was five years old is impressive. It was also chilling to read of his planning in advance to get his revenge on the world. And on that note, we find another major clue as to why he suffered so from mental problems. See that the ruler of Virgo, the ruler of the chart, Mercury, planet of the mind, is in the twelfth house of loss, separation, endings, isolation. Being the house behind the first house, the twelfth house also represents the subconscious. Here, Mercury is conjunct its enemy, Mars, the planet of combat and destruction. Mars distorts the thinking of the otherwise rational Mercury. Mars in the twelfth house is always a big warning light of problems in the subconscious. He was a very avid fan of the video game World of Warcraft, which he found to be his favorite retreat from the outside world. The twelfth house is also the house of dead pleasures, which he was denied. And here we see both gender planets Mars and Venus in rapt conjunction, and conjunct with Mercury, the thinking planet. Note that with Mars just a touch behind Venus, they are in what is called Graha Yuda, or planetary warfare, in which Venus, planet of young females, loses since Mars is coming in from behind. In this chart, Venus rules the second house of support and family, and Mars rules the third house of self-efforts and personal desire. Having both of these planets in the twelfth house of loss does not help him. He went into mental overdrive, thinking about sex, but he could not get to completion, and his rage built up year after year. The twelfth house signification of loss and separation gets an additional punch due to its ruler, the sun being placed in the eleventh house, the house of gains. In other words, the lord of loss takes away whatever rewards he may have attained, producing a pattern which strengthens the significations of the twelfth house itself, adding power to a negative situation for him. And yet, in his YouTube videos and his manifesto, he refers to himself as magnificent, that's Jupiter signifying expansion conjunct the Sun, the planet of pride. And since Jupiter is the planet of morals, truth, and law, when it is conjunct the Sun, significator of ego, you can become a law unto yourself. And then when we look into the house of romance, the fifth house, we see another problem. Here we have Saturn in its own sign, which strengthens this house, but in this case, 
since Saturn is the planet of delay and it is retrograde, romance gets held back even further, indicating that love doesn't arrive until late in life. Yes, Saturn gives its results or fruits, but uh, when we are older. And further, Saturn is directly opposed by its bitter enemy, the Sun, which carries the energy of the twelfth house of loss and separation and sends that energy into the fifth house of romance and its ruler, Saturn. Wow, what a, what a setup for torture. Mercury, the ruler of the chart, is conjunct Mars, the planet of impatience. And now we see that he would have to wait maybe decades for fulfillment? His manifesto is riddled with commentary on how he could see young couples everywhere hugging, kissing, and holding hands, and his abject bitterness about being alone, which simmered into a boiling self-righteous rage. When trying to understand psychosis, we always have to consider the placement of the moon, the emotional mind. Here it is placed in the fourth house of deep-seated feeling, in the fiery sign Sagittarius, a sign that is always certain of its own personal truth. The moon is in the nakshatra mula, symbolized by the knotted root, and associated with Nriti, goddess of destruction. This nakshatra is well known for problems, for the necessity of going through pain to arrive at the reward. And here we are talking about his feelings, his need for nurturance and satisfaction. Yes, and exacerbating his pain is a heavy-duty stellium of planets conjunct the moon. Retrograde Neptune, planet of fantasies. Retrograde Uranus, planet of rebellion. And Rahu, signifying cravings. Not a healthy situation. His intense moon was getting even more jacked up by such a pile-up of weird planets. So, not only does he have his moon in a fire sign, it is in a very intense nakshatra, and it is conjunct trio of planets that each, in their own way, can twist and tweak the situation. It all sounds like this guy could not escape being a bent soul. It is fairly clear that this is a chart for someone prone to severe emotional turmoil and vulnerable to mental illness. Now let's look at the astrological factors that contributed to his act of sick ultraviolence. But here it is important to note for everyone to understand, his self-described twisted manifesto goes into a great deal of detail. When he first thought of his day of retribution, what he would do and how he would do it, who he planned to kill, the locations he considered, and the target dates to enact his insane revenge. He had been brooding on doing this a long time. Yeah, and then the actual snap took place. First and foremost is the fact that Mars, the planet of violence, had been transiting in his first house of self in a retrograde state for many weeks. And then when it finally went direct, in other words, when Mars was stationary and thus extra strong, that was the time of the event. Of all the planets, the worst to have go retrograde is Malefic Mars. It is the significator for going ahead and moving forward. Thus, having such a pressure cooker in your first house is really bad Buddha, especially if you're already emotionally unstable and mentally ill. Another factor which brought things to a head was that Uranus was transiting in his seventh house pretty much exactly opposite the ascendant degree. A powerful seventh house transit affects your personality as it is directly opposed to the first house of self. Uranus is a disturbing influence prone to explosive events and what happened in Isla Vista certainly qualifies as something way out of control. The first 911 call came in at 9.27 p.m when the moon was more or less directly opposite Mars, another activating factor for the event, as if to set off a symbolic fuse. Cue up the moon, the planet of the emotional mind, and the public. Another important thing we should point out is that his chart really shows how pivotal the Vimshatari Dasha system is for timing the birth chart karma. I see what you mean, Ron. This immature 
impatient madman did not really need to see his son major period so early in life with a chart like this one needed to have more maturity to handle those 12th house energies. Yes, he entered his son major period at the beginning of 2012, six months before his 21st birthday. We have already talked about how problematic his 12th house was due to the presence of Mars. As Lord of the 12th house, the sun major period activated everything in his contorted subconscious mind. Vimsatori Dasha is one of the great keys of Vedic astrology. It shows the timing of the karma in one's life and how it plays out. Elliot Roger could not have escaped having mental problems, but having to face his 12th house issues so young by having a sun period early on in his life, that was not a good thing. Yes, and with that, we conclude this week's edition of astrologynewsreport.com.